everyone. Salam alaikum. Hola a todos. Que tal? My name is Emily Amon, and I am here to show you how you can grow your own food in a way that is healthy and healing for yourself, for your family, for your community, and for the lands and the waters where you live. Now, I would give these tips and tricks um, to anyone, no matter what the circumstances are. I'm a big proponent of encouraging people and empowering people to grow their own food. And I've been trying to give this information to folks in the community for a number of years. I've been involved in the food justice movement in the DC region for about the past 10 years. And particularly during this time when um, the whole country and the whole world is experiencing a lot of challenges because of COVID-19 and social distancing and trying to make sure that we have um, safe food to eat and limiting our time in the grocery stores, I felt that this was the right time to get this series started. So you might be asking, what are you gonna benefit from watching this series? Well, first of all, I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks to try and reuse materials as well as to have found materials that other people are giving away, um, which is gonna reduce your costs when you're growing your own food. Secondly, I wanna give you lots of tips and tricks about growing wherever you are. So I'm actually gonna start um, the first part of the series about growing on a balcony or a deck. So if you're someone who is a renter and you only have a deck, you can still grow where you are. I'm also going to do another series of videos that is about um, if you have access to a small amount of land in a backyard or a community garden, how to um, use different methods of growing in a sustainable way and in a way in particular that is healthy um, for the Chesapeake Bay if you live in the Chesapeake Bay region. Um, in a later series of videos, if you are someone who wants to grow your food in the soil and at a larger scale. So what are some of the reasons why you might want to grow your own food? Well, one of the biggest reasons is the safety. Because when you are growing your own food, you know exactly where it comes from. You know all of the inputs that are being used to grow that food. Um, what's the quality of the soil, the kind of seeds that you're using, the kind of transplants that you're using, and you know exactly what has and hasn't gone into that food. You know that it's not being sprayed with chemical pesticides and herbicides. You know that it's not genetically modified. Now, as we all know, getting that kind of food from the supermarket that's certified organic can be incredibly expensive. And in contrast, when you are starting your own plants, particularly from seed, which is the least expensive method of growing, you can save quite a lot of money by growing your own food. Another reason why it's great to grow your own food is that you can reduce the food miles that it takes for the food to travel to you. So a lot of food in the US is grown in California and then shipped all over the entire country as I mentioned, I'm in the Chesapeake Bay region, I'm in Maryland, close to DC. And so purchasing food in the grocery store that's come all the way from California entirely to the other side of the country is a huge amount of fossil fuel that is used in transporting the food. And it's just not necessary when there is sun and soil and water to grow food right where I am. Secondly, you can help to reduce the amount of plastic that you're using, which is a major source of pollution, particularly in the Chesapeake Bay and in the Potomac watershed. Um, unfortunately, a lot of fruits and vegetables are unnecessarily packaged in plastic at the store. So for example, when you're buying a, a three pack of a sweet bell peppers and they're inside um, plastic, um, I will say that for myself, because I compost, and yes, there will be a video about composting later in the series, uh, because of the fact that I compost, most of my trash at this point is uh, it's plastic wrapping that is not the type of plastic you can recycle. So growing your own food is a great way to reduce the amount of plastic that you are consuming um, because of your, your fruits and your vegetables being wrapped in plastic. Uh, another major uh, benefit to growing your own fruit is that it's incredibly fresh. 
When your food is fresh, it is much more tasty when you've just harvested it off of the balcony or the backyard or the community garden close to where you live. And additionally, when your food is fresh, it's much more nutritious, much, much higher in nutrition. Because again, when that food has been shipped so many miles from around the world or from across the country, it starts losing a lot of its nutrition um, the longer it has been from the point when it was harvested until you actually eat it. And the other thing that happens in our industrialized food system is that because the system is set up for transporting food, a lot of food is actually picked before it's even ripe and it doesn't have full nutrition or full flavor yet. Um, and it gets picked when it's not ripe yet in order to help it transport better. So when you're growing your own food, it's much more fresh and nutritious and tasty. And it's just, there's nothing that beats uh, that fresh flavor and nutrition from growing your own food and harvesting it and bringing it right inside um, quickly. Um, so as I mentioned, it can be much more economical and efficient. I'm also going to show you a lot of tips and tricks about um, how to do your planning for growing your own food that's going to make it more efficient by working in harmony with nature. And finally, growing your own food is fun. It's relaxing. There's a ton of studies that show that um, just having 20 minutes a day of being outdoors and working with plants or being outdoors and taking a walk through the woods can help to relax you, ease your stress, and improve your health. So I'm really excited to share all this information with you. I do want to give you a little bit of background on myself as well. Um, I first started growing food in the backyard at my grandparents' house with my grandpa and my abuelo. And the very first thing I ever grew was tomates, of course, which is a major favorite of every backyard gardener. And that's where I got started. I was really, really little, probably maybe five years old. And I really loved it from <coughs> the beginning. Um, over the years, I've also worked um, as a farm worker at a number of different um, family farms. Um, there was a, an apple orchard. It was a really diversified family farm. Um, after I moved from uh, Florida to Ohio that I worked on as a teenager, and that place had apple trees, plum trees, chickens, um, like peppers and tomatoes and <coughs> garlic and onions and some herbs. And they also had cows. And um, I have also worked at a different apple orchard that's in Maryland, um, uh, Butler's Orchard, which probably some of you know. And, uh, and then additionally, I have lived and worked on a permaculture farm. Um, I lived and worked on a permaculture farm for about four or five years. And a lot of the tips and tricks that I'm gonna bring in for you um, do have to do with, with a design system that's called permaculture. And um, I'm gonna give you throughout this series as well, um, a lot of links to um, books that I find helpful. I'm also gonna give you um, some information that I've discovered myself through years of research and through trial and error. Um, some of my background as well is that um, part of what's really important about growing your own food is um, it's really a, a matter of sovereignty. And, um, you know, it's, it's uh, Malcolm X said there is no uh, revolution that's not based on land. Um, and that if you can't feed yourself, you can't free yourself. And um, so that's, I'm really plugged into the food justice community and the environmental justice community. Specifically, I'm plugged into the environmental justice community um, because I grew up in a frontline environmental justice community. And that's how I got active in um, environmental advocacy work. Um, so eventually I decided to get my master's degree in environmental policy and I had a focus on sustainable agriculture. And um, so since I was a teenager, I've been involved with um, environmental justice movement, um, with growing my own food, with being a farm worker, uh, family farms, and I just have continued this love and this passion throughout my life and I want to share it with you. 
So as I mentioned um, in this series, I'm going to give you tips and tricks about growing wherever you are, whether you only have a balcony or whether you have a big backyard or whether you're in a community garden. So I hope that you will find this information helpful and stay tuned.